what's going on guys my day and welcome to a new video talking about halo infinite specifically doing a review on the halo infinite multiplayer beta so now i did a video about this beta before um and it's in the more of in the form of an unscripted rant rather than a scripted video talking about the game in a structural manner now i did take that video down which is mainly the reason why i'm doing it again in a different light in a different sort of more scripted way it was mainly the reason why I took that video down was mainly because there's visual aspects in that video that I wasn't satisfied with keeping on my channel. Just my recording stuff, I didn't work and it didn't show up properly in Premiere Pro. And I only noticed it when I watched the video back on YouTube. So for whatever reason, that video didn't render properly. And I thought, you know what? I was going to take it down and I'll just do the whole thing again because in a less ranty manner because i watched the video back and listened to the video back and i wasn't really that happy with the way i put my points across and now i can do it by putting my points across properly without endlessly nattering which is what i was doing before so first things first i want to say that i'm so happy with the way this game has turned out i would even go as far as to say it's one of my most favorite halo games since halo reach the weapons feel really solid from simple weapons like the ar and br and the sidekick, which surprisingly complement each other when used correctly. And then you have the power weapons like the energy sword and the rocket launcher, which are insanely fun to use and can either provide really easy kills or just outlandish chaos depending on how well you use it. The equipment also adds much to the sandbox. The grapple hook is my favourite and if you match that with the energy sword um, or the gravity hammer, you can make for quite a lethal player. The cloak is also I think the best iteration of the ability I've seen in any Halo game. It deactivates when you sprint, which isn't a new feature, but it does a really good job at cloaking you to the point where, where you could be staring someone in the face and they not notice you, which then provides some excellent stealth opportunities. Whereas in previous Halo games, you could quite easily tell which players had cloak, and that tended to ruin the ability a little bit. Models, and, models, textures, sounds and music are insanely good in this game as well and they're a huge compliment to 343's devs who created them for this game. The models alongside the updated textures make the weapons look so good and detailed and it makes me feel like I'm playing a AAA game alongside the sounds which add so much to the gameplay. And the music, well let's just say the composer for this game has blown it out of the park. After playing Halo 4 and 5 I didn't think we'd get anything close to what Bungie and Martin o Marty O'Donnell created for the original halo trilogy but yet we have this soundtrack which adds so much to the game is actually insane the modes are also really fun as well although they're pretty basic it's just your average like slayer which is fun because it's a classic and then your objective based modes like ctf strongholds and that sort of stuff and they're good because they're classics and with brand new levels which by the way look really good however btb is so much fun and it's not only um, really, really fun. But it's only good if you don't play too much of it. It's a really fun game alongside other vehicles and power weapons. But you And you can get some really fun and creative games. But because there are only three game modes for BTB, same as the flight, which is Total Control, CTF, and Slayer, if you play nothing but BTB for one whole day, you will get a burnout very quickly. But there are plenty of other modes in social and ranked that help alleviate that burnout. All the maps are, um, are really well thought out and really fun to play in as well. My favourite BTB map is High Power. Not only because of how diverse the map is with many vantage points and other um, elements as well. But how large the sandbox is. And I think much bigger. Um, and the sandbox for that map is a lot bigger than the ones we've, we have. The other two we have which is Deadlock and Fragmentation. Aquarius is my favourite arena map. Because of how well it looks, but also there's so many twists and turns which are, which you can use to outwit your opponent, especially if you're cloaked. My only problem with this map is that it's not very good for CTF because it is just too small. You look at Behemoth or Bazaar and they've got quite large open maps that work really well for CTF, but Aquarius doesn't have that. Now I do think there are some key modes missing like SWAT, Infection, King of the Hill etc. And as well as only having three game modes for BTB, which I think isn't very good if that's how they're going to keep it. However, I'm, I am aware that this is a, only a beta and I'm sure more modes will arrive when this game releases properly on December 8th. 
The map counts I'm perfectly happy with. However, I do think we could do with one more um, BTB map. Again, I think three maps of BTB isn't quite enough for a good rotation. I think four would be perfect. There is one glaring thing that I want to talk about, however, and that's the customization and the progression system. As it stands at the moment, the Battle Pass is the only form of progression system in Halo Infinite, and half of the good items and coatings and armor pieces are stuck behind a paywall of $10. Now, while I've bought this $10 Battle Pass myself, and I personally don't think that $10 for 100 levels of content isn't really that bad of a deal, I do think the 343 didn't do much to explain that this is the way that it was going to play out. My understanding of what it, how this was going to work was that you paid $10, which you could instantly unlock the entire battle pass on day one. Now, maybe that was me not understanding it properly, but I do think 343 could ex explain their intention a little bit better. However, the battle pass isn't the biggest problem in this game. What the hell is 343 doing with the monetization in this game? They are looking armor kits behind a $20 paywall with no way of unlocking them singularly. So if you saw a bundle with a helmet that you liked, you would have to pay the full $20 just to get that one piece of armor. There's a blue armor coating, not armor coating, weapon coating in the store that for, I think it's for the AR, which I actually thought was really good. And it, I really liked it. I thought it would do really good on um, my AR. But it costs $10. Because it's a bundle. And other things that are in that bundle, I don't really want. Like, there's a couple, there's like, I think there's like an, a few emblems and a, I think like a, a tag or something that's, that's attached to that bundle. But if I want it just for that coating, is that coating going to cost me $10? On top of that, if you were to pay for an armor coating, you can't even use all of your armor, use that armor coat on all of your armor cores. But for the one that it's advertised being used on. So if you buy an armor coach that's being shown on the Reach armor core, you think, well, that would look good on my Mark VI Spartan. Nope, you can't use it on your Mark VI Spartan, only the Mark V Reach armor. So here's an example. I was going to buy the Team Envy armor because I like the design uh, of the armor and the um, design of the textures on the armor as well, despite the fact that it looks very plasticky like everything did back last year. But I thought it would look nice on my Mark VI Spartan. But then, thankfully, I was watching Hidden Experience live stream, and he said that those armors and kits cannot be customizable, and they can only be used as part of the set that you buy them with. Now, if that's the way that it has to be, I suppose I can accept it, but as annoying that it is. However, we have literal screenshots of AI bots in, mi in game mixing armor cores. So mixing armor from different cores. So that feature is there, but it's only available for bots and not players. This annoys me because customization is a key feature in Halo ever since Halo 3. And so much that so much so that people create little stories with their characters given and giving even giving their players a little bit of a backstory and why it wears a certain armor that it does and how it became a Spartan. That's a community advantage that most free-to-play games don't have because of their lack of customization. But in Infinite, not only are the armors locked to specific cores, which already limits the player's ability to combine their armor from one one another anyway, not that's not all the good armor that's not on the battle pass you have to pay real-life money for. And it's not a reasonable cost either. Now, don't get me wrong. I have a I have no problem whatsoever with free-to-play games monetizing their games in order to make their money back. However, this is not the way to do it. There are people like me who takes great pride in how my Spartan looks in game. And when you have so many insanely good armor pieces that look so badass, locked behind a paywall with no free-to-play method of obtaining them, that's the issue that I have. Now that pretty much gets to the crux of my problem with this system. Is there's no free to play option earning your customization and the game is forcing you. That's the problem. It's forcing you to buy currency to customize your Spartan. So what do I think could happen to make this system better? Well, I think it could be a solution could be is that have premium uh, premium unlocks like the HCS skins locked behind a paywall because they're only for limited time events like while the tournaments are still active. However, add performance based XP system like there is in MCC. This would encourage players to play the objective and to create a better playing system within the game overall. 
Then with the challenges, instead of having a reward to complete them being XP, have it so you can get some in-game currency by completing the challenges, but make the challenges a bit more difficult to complete. So that would then compensate um, the harder challenges you can compensate by getting stuff that you would normally have to pay for. So for example, win 5 games of BTB and that gives you 180 credits. That not only ensures that people play the objective while completing their challenges, but it also means that those, pe those people who don't have the money to buy currency in-game can now customise their Spartan and earn that customization by playing the game in a way that they choose. This allows for those who are not patient enough to play the game and earn those points, the ability to pay for the currency to get it instantly. How much better would that system be? Not only would it, be, it give people a reason to play the objective and not endlessly kill each other for the fun of it, but it also means that free players can get the same things as people who pay for it, and there's no player segregation there whatsoever. So having said all that, I don't want you to think I dislike this game, because I really don't. I've had so much fun with this game, and even on a game where I'm on the losing team, I'm still having so much fun. The maps, the models, the textures, the sounds, the music, the whole lot are so good. And it's a huge compliment to the developers of 343. I spent so long creating such an awesome experience for Halo fans to enjoy. It's just a shame that one main feature in this game, the progression system and how that links to customization, just takes so much of that fun out of it. It doesn't make me invest in customizing my Spartan at the moment. Now, 343 is working on a solution to this problem, and I'm really interested to see what they do and how they're going to make it work differently. So that is about all I have time for in this um, let this video here. It's not a Let's Play talk video, review video here. Um, again, i just reading my script and writing it. I'm much more happy with how this um, video has come about. And it's also a lot lot shorter as well. Like I've been recording for 12 minutes, whereas the other one was more like 20 minutes. It was originally 33. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and me give my thoughts on the Halo Infinite multiplayer. And like I said... I love this game to bits. I've had so much fun playing this game. It's just the key, two key fundamentals of this game being progression and customization. I've just got no interest in at all at the moment because of how it's monetized. And again, I'm not against monetization in games, but they need to do it properly. Especially in a game, you know, people turn around and say, you know, you look at like Valorant or um, Fortnite or Apex, and they've got uh, paid, they got customization battle pass in them as well. But the problem is with those games is that customization is not a bigger factor as it has been in Halo since Halo 3, like what, like 15, 16 years ago. You know, for that whole 16 year period, customization has been a huge part of Halo. That's not the same in, in Fortnite or Apex or Valorant. So that's the key difference that it makes and why it is such a problem. And again, I'm really interested to see what 343 come about with and do to try and rectify this issue. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy, don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button for more awesome gaming content. And I shall see you all later. Bye.